Welcome back to the Who Dreams. We talk everything Canada soccer and US soccer. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than what we normally do, as this is going to be a condensed video of both the Canada and Jamaica game and the USA Panama game, or vice versa, since Panama and Jamaica both played at home. But in short, this is why I have on the Toronto Raptors jersey. You can only be talking about both games in one video, just for the sake of my time and your guys' time. So. I'm going to try and also see if I can do a little time slot too in the video. That way, if you um, if dedicated fans of both teams can just skip to uh, whatever part in the video that they want to see their team, we can just talk about. So I'll see if I can get that figured out. But basically, the video is going to be split into two parts. Part one is um, it's going to be Jamaica versus Canada. And part two is going to be Panama versus USA. Spoiler alert, both teams had poor performances. So... That's why. That's another reason I want to just talk about every everybody in one video because why make two videos of pain just to, just you know why why not just make it one? But this is part one. Uh, Panama. I mean Jamaica. Can I can't even talk right because I'm flustered, man. Jamaica, Canada, Neil Neil. But let's talk about the starting lineup. So I will. What I'm gonna do is talk about the starting lineup. Talk about the way it ended. So this one ended zero zero. Uh, no surprise, Jamaica, Canada, as I said early on. Poor form for Canada, but I'm going to break it down later on. Let's now let's start with the lineup. Donnell Henry for Canada, Maxime Crepeau, Alistair Johnson, Samuel Adekubic, Samuel Piet, Mark Anthony K, Leon Miller, Alfonso Davies, Jonathan David, Jonathan Osorio, and Derek Cornelius. So, basically, with it, I mean, good lineup for Canada. Um, you have all, you had all the pieces. But the story, the nice story with that game is just Canada just couldn't finish. I mean, look at Kamal, Kamal Miller. I, I, wrong Miller, I think. But Miller, for sure, in the 60-something minute, had a wide-open net. And what does he do? He kicks it right at the center to the keeper. I mean, come on. A baby could have just... All you had to do was just tap it in. It just it went, The keeper's one way. Open net's one way. Where do you go? The open net. Apparently, uh, Miller just... Screwed this one up and just kicked it right at the keeper. Andre Blake said, thank you very much as you saved us and basically allowed us to savage one point from our own home, which nobody expected Jamaica to do. I didn't expect Jamaica to do. I expected Jamaica to get pummeled just like they did with the USA. Uh, not pummeled, but dominated at least. But after halftime, Jamaica, it was a battle. Jamaica dug in, Canada had few chances, and Jamaica did a great job limiting those chances for Canada. You know, they also created a few chances of their own for Jamaica, but Jamaica just couldn't finish. But who expected Jamaica, honestly, to try and capitalize? The main story is Canada had the chances. They tried to, but just couldn't capitalize. That's the story, basically, overall. But overall, Canada just needs to create more chances. And, I mean, when they did in the second half, they couldn't finish, like the Miller, like Miller. Uh, I can't even say his name right. Mil Miller, as I said, wide open net, kicks it right at the center. Andre Blake says thank you very much, and they squeeze a point out from that. And um, poor performance, but at the same time, it's due to the USA losing to Panama. I mean, that's not really the end of the world for Canada. If anything, I mean, I don't know. It's good and bad. Good in the way that the Canada gained a point. You're kind of closing in on the USA, but you're still number four if you look at the overall standings. But I mean, it was just but bad as the USA lost to Panama. Panama just leapfrogged Canada, and now Panama's sitting in the number three position while the USA dropped it to second. So the USA in that case didn't do any favors for Canada there. But Canada's fourth right now, one game to go in this window. That's a must win on Wednesday at BMO Field against uh, Panama. They need to beat Panama. No excuses. You need to beat Panama at home here in Toronto at BMO Field. If you don't, then that's bad. I mean, that's just, it's, it's not good. You're not looking good. You know, you're talking about probably regression from the last week. The tie of Mexico this week was right now the high point. We stole a point, or they, Canada stole a point at Estadio Azteca. Um, technically, yes, you stole the point in Kingston, Jamaica, although, really, you should have had all three, but I'm not going to, I mean, I can't really complain since the U.S., I mean, the only reason would have bit Canada in the butt would have been if the USA 
uh, won and if Panama lost. I mean, either way, that game didn't help Canada at all. If Panama would have won, they would have still, I mean, they still won. They would still would have leapfrogged Canada. The USA would have won. They would just would have gained separation in the standings. Either way, I don't really think that USA-Panama would have did anything to this game. But, I mean, Canada just overall going back to the focus. Poor performance, just you got to finish better. Especially on the road, you need to finish chances better. I mean, this is painful to watch. I mean, I, this is another reason I'm watching, making two videos, or making one video at the one time, is because Canada, I mean, and the USA both played at the same time. So I had my eyes on two screens at once. And for this screen, mm -mm. Canada just, from what I saw, had the chances they had them in the second half, just couldn't convert. And you can't do that, and especially in CONCAP World Cup qualifying game. On the road, you know, it's, it's there. It, Canada should have won 1 0 regardless. I don't care if Miller would have scored that one or Davies would have scored. Either way, Canada should have walked away from Kingston going back to Toronto with three points. They don't. But as I said, we got to give credit to Jamaica here. Jamaica dug in. They just put their heels in and just basically prevented Canada from really capitalizing, as I said many times. I mean, Jamaica, we got to give credit to them. You know, and they even had some chances of their own that Jamaica just couldn't finish. But either way, if you're a Jamaican fan, you need to be happy. You know, honestly, uh, I expected you to not come any come any points from this window as you played the USA, uh, Mexico. I mean, not Mexico, USA, Honduras, and Canada. I mean, you stole a point from Canada. That's why. That's how I, you should look at this from. Canada was should it was favored and they should have won. They didn't because they couldn't finish their chances. But um, unbelievable. It's just, but yeah, Jamaica defends their home turf. You can say that. They get a point, and boom. You know, now Canada's, you have to win now at BMO Field if you want to maximize your points and look at a five-point uh, week. You know, originally I thought it was going to be a seven-point, but... Things don't always work out in CONCACAF World Cup qualifying, as we see. We, we look at USA and uh, Panama, and I'm gonna and we get into that shortly. But to recap, Canada needs to uh, Canada where they create the chances, they failed to bury them, and came back to bite them by dropping two points on the road in Jamaica. Um, still, by the way, I think the worst team in the group and on the octagon. So that's why it just hurts. It's because Jamaica. I mean, there it only from, it only gets hard, tougher from here. I mean, you played Canada played their hearts out against Mexico to come away with it, and then now all of a sudden we turn to Jamaica and it's a low point. It's just it goes from high to low and just in a in a span of three days, and it's just that's just demoralizing for me and for any other Canada soccer fan. I mean, you. I mean, honestly, I thought it was just only up from Mexico, right? Especially in the USA, you tied USA. You know they proved that they could go toe to toe with any any t nation in this octagon, but somehow came up sh uh, not came up short, but only managed to walk away with one point at Jamaica, the worst team in the group. Mm. But that's pretty much what I got to say for the Canada portion of the video. Now I'm gonna move to the U.S. portion of the video and. Boy, oh boy, where do I start with this? Uh, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to start. I'm going to start with the starting lineup. Or actually, before that, the score line. In this one, no surprise, as I said, Panama wins 1-0. They defend their home. And, I mean, the USA, really, this lineup for the USA was horrible. I mean, I'm going to get into that deeper. But uh, we start with Matt Turner, Walker Zimmerman, Shaq Moore, Giannis Musa, Pariola, Jossie Zardes, Sebastian Lejet, Mark McKenzie, Tim Weah, George Bello, and Kellen Acosta. Look at that lineup. I mean, unbelievable. Somebody even on the Facebook or group chat even posted a FIFA, a FIFA thing. I don't know what side it's gonna be on, but they posted uh, a lineup right here. I think it is, and just unbelievable. Maybe other way around. I don't know, man. I don't know, but it's gonna be on the screen some way. But you can see even the FIFA line. I calculated the chemistry. You just you can do the math yourself here and see that the the chemistry only adds up to eighty eight and not even a hundred, despite them all being Americans. 
and just really, really Greg Berhalter. This is the best lineup you had. I know Weston McKinney and a few others. That's also in the article I read too. They couldn't come due to COVID protocols. I'm assuming and injury reasons, but like Christian Pulisic and Reina. But seriously, this is the best we got. Why wasn't I mean? Why wasn't um Pepe starting after what after his performance in Austin t- on Thursday? Like why? I mean. What, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up. It's just frustrating. I mean, Pepe's not starting. Uh, Brendan Aronson should have started. I mean, seriously, Zardes, as I said, Zardes, I mean, yes, I mean, he's okay. He, he always performs above and beyond with the Columbus crew. But when it comes to the national team, he lays an egg. And what did he do tonight? He laid an egg. He, did, he barely even touched the ball. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, Giannis Musa was quiet, unbelievable, and, um, I mean, the U.S., I mean, just the attack, the offense was horrible. You can tell that the chemistry was, was lacking, as, I mean, passing, passing and balls were just going astray, and shots were just, I mean, I don't even know if the USA mustered any, of any like, good shots that I could think of that was just, oh, you know? Honestly, for the most part, Panama troubled the. I mean, this was Panama's game. Panama created more shots and attacking opportunities than the U.S. did. And every time I looked up, when I was watching both games at the same time, I looked up to the U.S. game. Every time I looked up, Panama was on the attack. Mid, can the U.S. mid? Well, I mean, well, with this lineup, the U.S. mid just cannot hold the ball or at least get some chances. I mean, that was just painful to watch. I mean, both screen, both games tonight were just painful, and just. Ugh. But as I said, I'm I'm looking at the wrong notes here. So let me. I mean, I can talk about this more in depth. But as I said, the USA overall, even at halftime, looked like sloppy Joe. <laughs> really, I mean, Panama just looked like from the from the get go. Panama looked like they wanted this game more than the US did. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to say. The USA just, I mean, at halftime, they had to clean something up, and they did. I mean, in the 54th minute, by the way, I didn't even mention, I need to mention the stats, too. Uh, what a golazo from Panama, too. And just unbelievable, you know. Uh, Godoy, from the corner flag, puts, puts the ball into the box. Just beautiful, nothing Matt Turner can do. I don't even think he sees this. And it just sells right over his head and goes into the net. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I don't even know. For the USA, I feel bad. And I forgot to even mention the stats for the Canada-Jamaica game. Look at how messy this is. Uh, okay. Uh, Jamaica, nine shots. Canada, ten. Canada had more shots in this one. One shot on target to Canada's two. Only two targets Canada, really? 36% possession to 64% possession. 245 passes to 418 passes. Canada outpassed Jamaica. None of that didn't mean crap. 63% pass accuracy to 78% pass accuracy. Once again, doesn't mean crap. 21 fouls to 12 fouls. 4 yellow cards to 1. No red cards. No offside. 3 corners to 10. I mean, that's just the Canada stats. And if I look up the U.S. stats here, look, I don't even have the stats in order because I was, I mean, I just, I'm so, I was so flustered that everything's going to be out of order. So if I go to the U.S. stats against Panama here, um, it's not pretty for the U.S.A. Panama outshoots the U.S.A. 8-5. to five. Four of those shots for Panama to zero on target for the U.S.A. How do you not muster the shot on target in Panama if you're the U.S.A.? Like I said, Panama, you can tell by the stats that Panama wanted this game more than the U.S. did. 49% possession to 51% possession. Doesn't mean crap. USA didn't even trouble the Panama goalkeeper. 404 passes to 401 passes. Okay. Eight, I mean, 80% pass accuracy to 79% pass accuracy. Okay. 12 fouls to 10. One yellow card to none. No red cards. One all sides to two. Seven corners to six. USA, how do you not score? I mean, not score. Get a shot on target alone on Panama. I mean, that's just dreadful. 
And as I said, just Godoy with a beautiful corner kick. By the way, Nashville SC represent. I mean, he just does the favors for Panama, and he takes three points alone. And But, yeah, I could care less about the USA just losing to Panama. The symptom is the lineup is what mainly what is the story for the USA. The lineup was horrible. I mean, as I said, go back to the FIFA uh, post that I have. It's just bad. I mean, you can tell that this is it was a, a sign of things to come. And everybody even the group chat was like, yeah, oh, this is not good. Lineup is horrible. Greg Borhalter could have picked a better lineup. He sure could have. But, as I said, I care less about the USA losing in Panama to Panama. It's just a symptom of the lineup that Greg Borhalter put out tonight against, uh, honestly, what the USA should have put up more of a fight. The stats, I mean, the stats literally said that the USA didn't put up a fight in terms of shots. I, I saw that the USA didn't put up a fight in terms of shots. As Panama just broke down this USA lineup and just played them off the field. Give all credit to Panama. I mean, can you even, I mean, I'm not even mad at Panama. I'm just, I'm more mad at how the USA played knowing how we could have put up a better lineup than what Greg Broad to put up. Just unbelievable. And hey, sometimes you need a loss like this to get your head on straight. Send a message. You know, break that winning streak or that undefeated streak that the USA had. Go back and reevaluate your each each player on this field needs to go back and reevaluate themselves before the game in Columbus this Wednesday against Costa Rica. I mean, this performance was in, unacceptable. I mean, what was this? I, it was an eyesore to watch, and just unbelievable. I mean, what happened? Was the USA overall smelling themselves over the last performance over Jamaica? I mean, I don't know. But I just I do know that this lineup and this group of players tonight for the USA played like crap and needs to be improved if they if they are gonna if Greg Berhart is gonna put up the same exact lineup in Columbus. I mean unacceptable performance from the USA and from Canada tonight. Both of them should be ashamed of each other. Both need massive improvements. And really, really needs to evaluate themselves again. Um, but that pretty much does it for the USA. USA's game was a story. This is a bad lineup. I mean, honestly, you could have put it. Why was Ricardo Pepe not starting? Why was Brendan Aronson not starting from the get-go? I mean, that's just Greg Berhardt relying too much on his artists. Just, uh, uh, and the midfield. I mean, the midfield just was poor. They were non-existent. Panama was eating the USA mid to pieces to shreds. I mean, I don't even know if you could really. I don't know, man. Story of the lineup for that is just poor lineup. Pick a better lineup and play better for the USA. That pretty much does it for both Canada and the USA. Uh, as I said, I'm going to try and make a timestamp where you guys can uh, only watch the part of the videos that you're only interested in. But, um,. Unbelievable performance from both teams. Both teams need to go back and regroup tonight and look ahead to Wednesday and really, really get wins. Both teams need wins. Uh, that does it. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe it. Share it with all your friends. And by the way, on the 13th, Wednesday, I'm going to be watching uh, the Canada game at a sports bar with a friend. So the USA game, I'm going to have to watch the highlights for it. And I might just do another one of these videos where I do a compressed video since it's at the same time. So... If you like this uh, video, make sure you like and subscribe. Tell your friends about it. And um, that does it. See you guys.